Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I am a team lead on our customer support team here at Meetup. I am joined today by Colin. Uh, Colin, why don't you say hello? Hello, everyone. My uh, Colin, here... work on product oh, support team uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and we are here today to host another Meetup 101. We are proud to announce the new Meetup for Organizers app. Uh, we're going to get some administrative details out of the way first. Uh, I did notice we already had a question in the chat about uh, whether or not you need to mute. This event is going to be uh, courtesy muted, so your audio is going to be automatically muted during the event. Um, uh, in case you're wondering, this event will be recorded and you will not appear in the video. Everyone's video has been automatically turned off just like the audio. Um, if you do have questions, there is a special Q&A button in Zoom where you can submit those questions. Uh, we'll be holding a Q&A at the end of the session. We'll also have some of our specialists online throughout the event uh, answering questions and uh, we'll be happy to answer uh, any questions you may have about the Meetup for Organizers app. Um, and last but not least, uh, closed captioning is available. To turn it on, you'll wanna click on the live transcription icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen and select your preference. Uh, today, uh, we can expect a little five minute introduction as we talk about the Meetup for Organizers app. And then Colin is gonna lead us through a demonstration of how this new Meetup for Organizers app works, what you can do with it and what you can expect from it. We'll even give you a chance to download it yourself and start playing with it. And then, like I said, we'll get an opportunity at the end to answer some of your questions. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna roll us directly into, um, well, before that, actually, let's talk about what you could expect today, sorry. So first, um, I'm gonna talk you through why we are so excited about this Meetup for Organizers app, uh, what it's going to do for you as organizers, why we dedicated our resources to making a dedicated app for organizers like you. Uh, you're going to learn how you can set up and log into the Meetup for Organizers app. We'll uh, show you the primary feature of the app, which is creating an event and all of the features that are included therein. Uh, we'll show you how you can request additional features since this is a new product that we are sharing and uh, hearing from you is a really huge part of how we continue developing and improving on it. And last but not least, um, we will show you how you can reach out directly to our support specialists in case you have questions about using this new app. Um, all right, so uh, as I said, we're gonna start by talking about why uh, organizers deserve a specialized app for hosting events. So um, what we've learned over the last few years as we've continued upgrading and improving the primary meetup app is that having both experiences for members and organizers, it's an overlap in experience and resources. Uh, it's meaning, it means that if you are an organizer and you are also a member of uh, certain other groups that you're not hosting, uh, you're kind of duplicating effort. By separating the two experiences, we get to focus on uh, dedicating some of those resources uh, behind the scenes specifically for the tools for hosting. So it's gonna be a faster and simpler experience. You'll be able to like get to the buttons you need to end up scheduling your events so much faster than you would in the primary app. Um, and it also means that uh, for attending events, you get a specialized dedicated experience in the existing app. The new app is designed specifically for hosting events at this time, and we'll continue expanding that and making that uh, a more immediate and on the go easy experience so that while you are boots on the ground at your event in person, you'll have like this very specialized way to continue managing that. Um, so that is the thought behind the new Meetup for Organizers app. Now we're gonna show you how you can get the app yourself and start setting it up. Um, so you'll see on the screen now, uh, some screenshots of what this new app is going to look like, but we've also got a QR code. If you scan that QR code now, you'll be brought to a landing page where you can start downloading the Meetup for Organizers app. The landing page is going to have links for both Android and for iOS users. So no matter what device you have, you'll be able to get a version of the app that's gonna work for your device. Um, once you do download it, you'll be able to log in using the same credentials that you use to log into your Meetup account on the desktop web experience or on the existing Meetup uh, app. 
Um, so it's the same account, just you'll get specialized access to managing uh, events through your groups with this particular app. Um, I'm going to move on from this slide, but I will give you a heads up that if you haven't gotten a chance to scan this QR code, we've included this QR code throughout the presentation today. So as we're walking you through it, if you want another chance to try downloading it and logging in and walking along with what Colin's going to demonstrate for you today, you'll have plenty of opportunities to do that. Um, and so now I'm going to hand it off to Colin, who's going to show us how to navigate the Meetup for Organizers app. All right, hey everyone. So I'm excited to show you. Um, the, I have three kind of uh, walkthroughs of what the uh, Meetup for Organizers app can do. Um, we're gonna talk about navigation first. I just wanna let you know, obviously, there's the uh, scan me QR code again on the screen. Feel free to scan it and uh, download it. I think it's really valuable. If you are able to download it, you can uh, walk through it with me. Um, so in the navigation, uh, topics we're going to talk about logging in upcoming draft and past event list hosting tips group settings toggling between groups and your profile page um, i'm gonna have uh, this screen recording play and i'm going to kind of narrate over it so if you're on your phone um, feel free to zoom in on uh, the zoom screen so you can kind of uh, see see what's going on uh, if, if if the screen is too small cool so go ahead and press that so when you open the app, you'll first need to log in with your organizer account credentials. Uh, this app is not available to members, so you'll need to be on the leadership team of a group in order to access this app. So when you log in, you'll, be, you'll land right on uh, the group page. You can see this is an arts and crafts group, and you'll see a list of your group's upcoming events. You can also toggle between your drafts and past event list. And then at the bottom there, there's a bunch of hosting tips. So you can see um, that they link out to the Community Matters blog. And at the top, there's the group settings. So this is currently um, a mobile web experience, but we do have plans to fully integrate this into the app soon. In the upper left, if you tap uh, the four dots, you can toggle between your, your multiple groups. So here I'll click the my other group, Get Outside NYC, and you can see all the upcoming events. And then in the upper right-hand corner is your profile. Um, this is where you can uh, report a bug, contact support, share feedback, and any feature requests that you think <clears throat> would be good on uh, to add on the app. Um, and you can also log out on that page as well. So that was just kind of the overall navigation of it. Um, but I do want to kind of drill into the, the most useful part of the app right now, which is creating an event. So this one, we will cover obviously creating an event, um, adding titles, locations, date, date and time, description, featured photo. And then we have a bunch of optional settings and a few that are only available in the app. And it's they're not available in the member app the original Meetup member app. So, so go ahead and press play, Alex, thank you. Cool, so we're back on this group page and you'll notice that there's a red plus sign in the bottom right corner. When you tap that, there's two options. You can create a new event and you can copy an event. Tap the plus sign to create a new event. <coughs> and then um, this event scheduler, this is the event scheduler where you can input all of your event details. So I'm just gonna title this um, Hike to Bear Mountain. It's a, it's a fun upstate hike. And um, then you can uh, choose whether the event will be in person or online. So you can even include the online event URL. But for this one, I'll choose that it's in person and we'll hike to um, the trail entrance at Bear Mountain State Park. So I'll edit the map pin to the... Um, Appalachian Trail entrance. And then there's a field uh, to input how to find us. You can just kind of give directions to your members, especially, especially helpful for in-person events. So I'll just say, let's meet in the parking lot. And then you press save in the upper, upper right. And then next uh, you'll want to add the event date and time. So this event, 
Um, I'll choose from the calendar Sunday, May 29th, and we'll start around 11. Not too early, not too late. Probably take around three hours to hike. And yeah, that, so that's the end time and save that. And then we'll go down to the event description. So this one um, is great because um, unlike the member app, you can um, add rich text formatting. <clears throat> so I'll just say, let's take a trip up to Bear Mountain and then I'll make this bold. You just press the formatting options. It'll show the formatting, make sure to bring, and I'll make a, like, I wanna make like a list. So I'll use the bullets, comfy shoes, some water and some snacks. And so once you're done, you can press the preview just to make sure it looks all okay. And then you save that. Obviously you can add way more than that. So for featured photos, I downloaded a few photos of Bear Mountain from Google images. So I'll just pick one that looks good and save that. And then at the bottom, so all the features above um, uh, are mostly mandatory, but these are all optional at the bottom. So this first one is COVID-19 safety measures. Um, it allows you to tell your members that masks or the vaccine is required and whether the event will be held indoors or outdoors. So you can just select whatever you think is necessary. Here I picked outdoors and um, the vaccine. And then this, can you pause real quick, Alex? Sure. This feature is um, only available in the organizer app. Um, and it will appear once you select the event state and time. So if you don't see it on your screen right now, it's probably because you haven't added the event date and time. So that'll populate at the bottom. Just wanted to make sure that you weren't confused by that. Cool. And then so you can play and I'll keep this feature off because I just want it to be a one time event. And then we also have ask members a question. So I'll turn this on and offer, offer someone a ride, you know, so when members RSVP, they'll see this question and they'll be able to answer. This gives you a little more insight into, you know, what, what people need or some preparations. Um, the add and change host feature is also only available in the organizer app. So I'll add um, Alex to be my co-host. I'll save that. And then for the attendee limit, this will let you cap the number of members who can RSVP. Since this is outdoor, I'll just keep that off. And then allow, I got that, allow guests. I'll say that 10, 10 people or 10 guests can come with a member. Then this one, this feature is also, um, will also only appear when you select the date and time above. But you can uh, open or close RSVPs at whatever time. Now this one, if you can pause real quick, Alex. Sure. Um, if you'd like to charge your members, you can set the payment method to direct from members where they'll give you money in person or maybe they can give you, um, send you money via Venmo or you know other outside um, platforms. You can play it. And, or the other option is uh, PayPal. You'll have to set up your PayPal account in order to collect funds first. But this feature is not available in the original Meetup app. So we're really excited to offer this one in the Organizer app. I'll keep this setting off for now because it's just a hike. And then let's say I'm not quite ready to publish the event. You can save it by tapping Save Event at the bottom. And then it will appear in your event draft list right there. So let's say you want to maybe delete the draft though. You'll just tap the draft and then the upper right-hand corner, the three dots, you can um, delete it from there. But I won't delete this one. I'm actually going to publish it. So hit that big red publish event button <clears throat> and voila, you can, you've uh, just created an event in the organizer app. Just FYI, when you publish an event in the org app, the event announcement will automatically sent, be sent to your members right now. 
And if you want to share it, you can tap share and it'll, you can share it like externally to your network or other friends. And then there's this optional feature. If you just want to share feedback, it'll ask you if you want to. So yeah, so that was a, you know, a rundown of um, creating an event in the app. This is the, the primary feature. Um, and now I would love to show you how to view, edit, and copy events in the app. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to view event details. I'll show you how to share your event, manage your attendees, edit the event, and copy the event. So go ahead and play that, thank you. So let's say you wanna view one of your upcoming events. You're on your upcoming events list. Just tap an event, <clears throat> and then you're taken to the event page where you'll see all of the event details of what, what you created. So tap the share button in the upper right. You can share externally again. And then at the top, there's the going button, going field. And this will also bring you to mobile web where you can view and manage your attendees. We're planning to integrate this attendee management into the app in, in the near future. But for now, it's still on mobile web. Now, if you'd like to edit the event, you can tap manage event at the bottom and you have all these options. You can edit the event, view event in the original meetup app, close for RSVPs, copy the event and cancel the event. Now, if I tap edit, it will remind me that this event is in a repeat series. So it's just kind of reminding me that any changes I make won't be applied to the other events. So when I click continue, I'm here on the event scheduler again. I just wanna like change the time to maybe like extend it by one hour. So I'll change the end time to five o'clock. <laughs> and then I'll save and publish it. So um, a super useful on the organizer app is the ability to copy an event. So let's say I had a really great event in the past and I just wanna quickly copy it. You can tap the plus sign and click the copy icon. And this is a list of your past events to pick one. And you'll have to change the event date and time. <clears throat> so I'll just change it to, you know, this up, this like uh, June 4th. And then um, adjust any of the optional settings that you want. And then publish it. It's pretty, it's very quick and easy. And, um, and it's, it's, a, it's just like a really um, convenient way to uh, schedule events on the go. So yeah, so I hope that was helpful to kind of uh, see this run through. Um, like I said, we have so many more features that we want to add, but this is really the basics that we, we wanted to get out. Um, and we're really looking, looking for all of your feedback and, uh, and ideas on how we can make this the best possible. And on that note, uh, as we're talking about hearing from our community of organizers, I'm going to step back in and talk us through the best ways that you can reach out and do that. Um, so uh, if there are particular features that you are used to using on the desktop web experience that haven't either been introduced in the Meetup for Organizers app, or as Colin has pointed out, in some cases, they bring you out to the website in your uh, on your device, that's what we call the mobile web experience. If those are features that you'd like us to prioritize, we would love to hear from you on the product feature request form. You can scan this QR code, and I believe uh, we are also posting in the chat a direct link. Um, other links that you might want to keep in mind, uh, if you don't have specific requests, but you just want to know uh, the updates on the app or on the website as they're being released, uh, we recommend that you stay up to date on our product updates. This is usually posted through our blog. If you have questions or you need help using something, uh, please go to Meetup's Help Center. Uh, our support specialists are available via email. Um, we also have an abundance of articles that are designed to help you solve your problem, get back to using Meetup, and building your community 
Um, and if something has gone like really, really wrong, like your app is just crashing or you're running into issues like error messages popping up as you're trying to use the app, that's when we would love for you to submit a bug report uh, using this uh, last code that we have in the bottom right hand corner. Um, by using the direct form to report bugs, you will get uh, more efficiently routed to our product support specialists who will be able to help resolve that issue for you faster. Um, so uh, again, those resources are going to be posted uh, in the chat. Um, and uh, with that said, we now have reached our Q&A portion. I believe we've had specialists who are answering Q&A questions throughout the presentation so far. Um, uh, and we're going to take a look in the Q&A chat and see which questions have not been answered via chat and what we will be answering aloud. While we answer these questions, I've got this um, uh, slide back up with the QR code so that you can download the app and start taking a look at it if you haven't already. Um, also, um, well, I'll take a look and we'll see. Yeah, I have. I There's a good one right here. <clears throat> um, let's see, Bill. Bill asked, will we be able to still schedule and maintain events on the regular desktop app? I find desktop to be a better interface for me than the phone. That's a great question. And the answer is you will definitely still be able to um, uh, schedule, edit, manage events on desktop. That's not going anywhere. This app is really just meant for those who want to use your phone to quickly uh, schedule events or, or manage um, events kind of more on the go. So um, yeah, so I hope that that answers your question. Like we definitely are, are putting a lot of resources into improving the desktop experience uh, at the same time as this, uh, mem our member app and organizer app. Let's see. It also looks like um, someone had been raising their hand uh, during our presentation today. Uh, if you have a question, we'd appreciate uh, it getting posted directly into the Q&A so that we can uh, just keep track of who's got questions and make sure that we can answer them. Um, let's see. I have another one. Um, sure. So this one is from Linda. Is the app for all organizers, co-organizers co and assistant organizers? And the answer is it's for anyone who's on the leadership team. So um, basically, if you own the group, you can you can log in. If you are co-organizer, assistant org, event org, you can you can also edit um, events. Now the the caveat is um, you have to be on the leadership team. So if you are an event host, I don't believe you have access to it. But if anyone has thoughts about that, we would love to hear your feedback. Let's see. See, we had a question from Paul. How do we set the event fee to offline? Um, that uh, was uh, the specific phrase for it in the app, Colin, that you walked us through. Was that uh, in person? Is that how it's listed as opposed to PayPal? It was direct from members. Direct from members, that's it. So that's if you would like to collect those funds in person. Right. Um, Here's one from Sasha Davis. Can we add new members to our group from this app or is it just for creating events? That's a great question. The answer is right now, it's really primarily just for creating events, but we've heard a lot from people, from organizers like you who want um, the ability to kind of manage your group and membership, whether it's like, you know, re adding, removing, banning, promoting, different like ways to uh, to to uh, manage members um, in your group. Um, it's not available right now. The closest we have is manage attendees, like I showed in the in the the walkthrough. Um, that goes out to the uh, mobile web experience. But um, but yeah, that's a really great request, and we want to add. I, we definitely want to add that. I see a question from Hillary um, who asks, uh, so we can create a draft event in the organizer app and can later amend and publish the draft within the meetup account. Uh, can we do that on a browser on our laptop? Um, 
I believe the answer is yes. The drafts that you save in the app are saved as part of your account. So if you log into your account and then go to your group uh, on another device, those drafts should be saved. Um, if that is not the experience you're encountering, we definitely want to hear about that. That's something that we would love for you to write in about either through uh, our help center or through the bug report. Um, let's see. Um, I do David. see some questions about whether this webinar is going to be recorded. It will be. Um, I believe uh, we will be sharing the video for attendees after uh, the event has been concluded. Um, Colin, did you I have just see, Yeah, I just see one from David Williamson. He, he said, can you create, create and not publish? So I think he's asking if you can create a draft. And that's right. So you can create a draft. Um, when you are in the event scheduler on the app, you can uh, click save event at the bottom and that will that will save it as the draft and you'll see it in the upcoming, or sorry, the draft list on your uh, group page. Let's see. Um, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing this name, but it looks like Zarifa has asked, how do we schedule an event and not have a wait list? Um, so that's part of your optional settings as you are setting up the, as you're scrolling through the event scheduler, as you fill out the form at the bottom, there is an attendee limit option. If you turn that off, there will be no limit and therefore there will be no wait list. Um, so uh, any attendee of your group will be able to RSVP without being put on a list. Um, Here's one. Um, I'm sorry, it's S. S tripathy. Um, I think I, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Sorry. The question is for repeating events, can I set a custom repeat? Example, the first Thursday of every month. That is an excellent request. Right now, you can only select, um, you can't customize it that detailed. We do have um, that you can set an event to repeat every week and choose the day of the week. However, we don't have the first day of every month or last day of every month yet. Um, but again, definitely submit that um, as feedback because I think that that's a, a great use case. Um, I think that could be really, really helpful. See, Clyde thanks, asked. Thanks for sharing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Clyde asked, um, it sounds like we're combining the publish and announce event on new events. Is that correct? Uh, yes, on the app, when you publish a new event, it automatically will announce. Uh, Clyde also asked, uh, with the normal Meetup app, will we still be able to separate these features? At this time, the normal Meetup app already does not separate them. If you create an event in the app, it's going to automatically publish. Um, at this time, if you want to separate out the publishing of an event from the announcing of the event, the best way to do that is with the desktop experience. When you publish an event there, it'll have a pop-up that'll ask if you want to announce now or announce later. If you select later, you'll get a banner at the top of your event page that will prompt you to announce. And that'll stay there until uh, six or seven days before the event. And that's when our system will automatically take over and start sending automatic reminders out to people. So I hope that's helpful. Let's see. Here's a good one. Can I schedule a Meetup Pro event with the app? So that's kind of a complicated question or answer. Um, it's not complicated. It's just, OK, so you can definitely schedule events um, on groups that are linked to a pro network. So let's say you know you have a pro network and you have a bunch of groups. Um, you'll still see those groups on the organizer app in the upper left. You can toggle between all those groups and you can schedule events through them. However, we do not yet have the ability to schedule network events. So if you want to schedule a pro network event that's across multiple groups, you'll need to um, go into your uh, pro dashboard um, um, on desktop or mobile web, um, however you, you manage your, your pro network. I hope that was I hope that was clear. <laughs> Let's see. Lisa had asked how we can copy the description from previous events. She says she tried to add info to a description and she had to start again. Is there a way to just edit? Um, I think the 
most efficient way to do that is by copying a previously published event, um, which we try to make very, very easy to do on this app. It's uh, part of like the base um, like homepage for it. The bottom right hand corner has that red button. If you tap it, you'll get a copy event icon. You can select a previous event that has a, uh, a description that you want to replicate. Um, and uh, you'll be able to edit, I mean, you'll be required to edit the date and time for that copied event, but you'll be able to adjust slightly your pre-existing uh, details from that event as well. Um, I wanted to uh, share uh, something that um, we're working on. So, you know, earlier in the presentation, I, I mentioned that currently when you um, publish the event that the announcement is automatically sent. Um, so right now that's the case. However, we're going to be changing that soon. I just, I wanted to tell you the current experience, but we will be changing that soon because we want uh, organizers to be able to manually announce the event because sometimes you don't want to just like publish it and automatically be sent. You want to like be strategic on when the announcement goes out. So um, we're excited to be able to um, create the event but not immediately announce it. And I think David would um, ask that question. He said, I often do that on the PC um, so that the speaker can review the page before I announce the event. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really, uh, I think that's a good feature and a good ability to just like be able to wait and choose when the announcement goes out. But that's coming soon. It's good to keep an eye as well. Like even throughout this presentation, we were pointing out there are certain things within this app that will uh, push you out into the mobile web experience. That's giving you an indication of like what we're trying to build next and how we're trying to improve the app. These are still ongoing changes and improvements and um, continue to hear from you, like we keep saying is a huge part of this process. And on that note, um, I see uh, John has asked, is it possible to define a donation, a fund that you request but isn't required? It's a great question. We definitely used to have this feature, uh, I believe it was called contributions, and we turned it off, I think a few years ago. Um, I don't believe we have anything official to announce right now, but um, unofficially, I believe there is uh, something you might wanna keep an eye on in our product updates in the coming months along these lines. Um, Likely it's going to be um, group based, like something you would set up for your group settings rather than for an event. Um, if you want to have an optional fee for a specific event, uh, what we already offer with PayPal is an effective way of doing that. Um, uh, PayPal ticketing is optional. That's how it's, it's built into the system. Uh, it doesn't require that your attendees um, uh, complete the PayPal payment in order to, to end, uh, like confirm their RSVP. So um, if all you're trying to do is just create uh, uh, an event-specific donation, I would recommend setting up a PayPal account and setting up a fee that way. Um, and you can just make sure you're clear in your event description and when you're communicating with your attendees that it's uh, a suggested donation and not a requirement. So thank you for that question, John. Um, Thomas P asked, will we be able to keep track of attendance, late cancellations, no shows, et cetera? So right now, um, the mobile, so right now the way to ma manage uh, members and to track attendance is through the, the mobile web. You click, man, um, sorry, you click the going and it brings you out to the manage attendees page. That's the mobile web experience. However, we have this awesome design uh, that's coming of how to do exactly what you ask. Keep track of attendance much more easily and on the go. So, um, and this, this will be primarily uh, in the organizer app because it's, it's not in the member app nor on uh, really on desktop. So, um, so yeah, you'll be able to track late cancellations, no shows. Um, you'll be able to mark people as going and kind of check people in. Um, so that's that's still to come, um, but yeah, we're we're working on that. Let's see, Derek asks if there's a way to contact host support via the app or only on Twitter. 
By host support, I am assuming that you mean um, contacting support specialists, that you are a host who needs support from us. Um, and the answer is yes. On the app homepage, uh, tapping your profile icon in the top right-hand corner, um, you'll see links in your profile to contact support. Um, so, uh, and if another way to interpret this is if you are um, trying to contact a host of an event, um, at this time, and Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have direct messaging tools set up in this app yet, but it's definitely right. something we're looking at. It's definitely something we would love to get feedback on through that product feature request form as something to prioritize if it's gonna be something that's really useful uh, uh, in person as you're- yeah. Alex, feedback. can you um, shift the slide over to the QR codes where you can submit uh, feedback and feature requests? Yeah, of course. Nice. Yeah. So this is a great, uh, great place to uh, share your thoughts because I'm I'm looking at it every day, and um, our PM Susie and, and designer Caitlin are really um, on top of it. So we're we're working really hard, and all of our engineers, no less. <laughs> so, all right. We've got a few more minutes for questions. We'll try to keep, get as many of them as we can. Um, I see a question from Don here that says uh, the the normal Meetup app allows me to remove members. Um, it's a great point. Uh, at this time, the Meetup for Organizers app is optimized for event management rather than group management. Um, I don't 100% know the timeline for trying to integrate it, but the group settings button that pushes you out into the mobile web experience is an indication that it is something that we have uh, in mind for the future. We're going to try to make sure that this app uh, allows you to do everything that you are able to do on the website. Uh, that you were able to do on the normal app uh, in a more efficient and a faster way. I see a question from Don Percy. Will the Meetup Organizer app populate with previous meetups, meetup events of a group? And yes. So when you log in, you should uh, be able to see all of uh, your past events. Um, now, I will say that I think there is a 30 if, uh, there's a maximum of 30 events that will show up. Of course, there's many groups out there that have more than 30 past events. We've heard your feedback and uh, we, we're sharing, we've shared that with um, our, our product team to um, hopefully we can increase the cap for that or just you know not have a cap. So um, because of course, if you wanna copy a past event, um, that's super, super helpful. I think we've got time for one or two more questions here. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry, we're trying to scroll through, through here and see which uh, questions are gonna be most popular and most useful to answer. Um, Here's one. Sure. Um, what's the difference between the, this is kind of general, but it's uh, what's the difference between the current app and this new app? So I'll try to summarize. Um, so the, the current app, AKA the original meetup app, <clears throat> you can still do a uh, group and event management on that app. Uh, we have a lot of features on there. Um, but this new app, this new Meetup for Organizers app is really meant for organizers to focus on event management. So this new app uh, has everything you can do with the, um, or everything you can do around managing events with the original Meetup app. But we also added the ability to um, add or change event hosts. We added the ability to um, edit, I'm sorry, use rich text formatting. You can create um, events that are repeating um, and you can uh, uh, set event feeds. All of those are not currently on the member app. Um, so we thought those would be good to add because those are great features. Um, but yeah, so like, but like I said, there's still many more features that we wanna add to the app. 
but right now that's kind of the summary. Hope that was helpful. All right. Well, with that, um, and thank you for that summary, Colin. Um, that's going to bring today's Meetup 101 to a close. We are really excited to share this Meetup for Organizers app with you and to start receiving some of this feedback as you're starting to use it. Uh, we're dedicated to continuing to improve it. So please, please, please let us know what you think. Um, as always, uh, we have our Keep Connected uh, podcast with our CEO, David Siegel. You can scan the QR code to subscribe now. Thank you very much for attending another uh, session of Meetup uh, Live. And thank you very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Take care. <laughs>